Welcome to this time of prayer and reflection. My name is Richard Snow, one of the team who serve the church in and around Kirby Lonsdale. Today, we're reflecting on a passage from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. And it's a passage in which the word rejoice rings out at the beginning. Rejoice, be joyful. The second most frequent command in the Bible. Perhaps we think of the Psalms as, as one of the high points of that, full of rejoicing and praise. But even in the book of Job, even in the depths of despair, there's hope and there's the possibility of joy once again. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Jesus' stories, the joy of finding the lost sheep or the joy of finding the lost coin. But for me, I think one of the most amazing things about this particular letter is the fact that Paul wrote it from prison when he was facing all the uncertainty and the discomfort and the fear of not knowing what the future held. And yet he still wrote about hope and about joy. So it seems a very appropriate passage to be reflecting, reflecting on at this time with the uncertainty and the fear that we're going through when there's so much that can weigh upon our minds. So listen now, Michael's going to read to us from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodio and I urge Synthici to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing all the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Yesterday was World Mental Health Day. Thankfully, there is now much greater awareness of the importance of taking care of our mental health than in the past. But no matter how positive or emotionally strong one is, anyone can experience a mental health problem at some time in their life. One person in every four will be affected by a mental disorder at some stage of their lives. There are so many conflicting pressures in contemporary life and modern forms of communications have brought a whole different dimension to human experience and relating. Living in an age and multi-layered complexity has taken its toll on our mental health. Of course, social conditions such as economic circumstances, breakdown of family life and social isolation all contribute to poor well-being. A global pandemic on top of all that has raised concerns for people's mental well-being. The organisation MIND states World 
Mental Health Day 2020 is the most important one yet. The months of lockdown and loss have had a huge impact on us all and prioritising mental health has never been more important than it is now. In today's text, the Apostle Paul comes alongside two women leaders who have struggled beside him in bringing the good news of Jesus to Philippi. In other words, laboured along with him. Some commentators think Paul is speaking about the two women being in conflict, but I'm with John Chrysostom, who feels that Paul never says the women had been quarrelling. Rather, Paul simply encouraged each of them, literally, to think the same thing in the Lord. In the previous verses in Philippians, Paul had been encouraging mature people to have the same thinking as himself, to set their minds towards the things of God, pressing on towards the goal. It could well be that Paul is carrying on this thought and using almost identical language and is saying personally, I encourage you, Odia, and I encourage Syntyche to have the same thinking in the Lord. John Chrysostom did not see any sign of a quarrel um, in Paul's plea to you, oh dear, and Syntyche. He saw only praise and virtue and wrote, do you see how great a testimony he, Paul, bears to their virtue? I don't think I'm stretching the point too far to suggest that there is something important here about setting one's mind on the things of God. Euodia and Syntyche, who lived in a Greco-Roman society, surrounded by the worship of other pagan gods, would have had a hard time attempting to serve the growing church and community there amongst hostility and fragmented society and competing ideologies. What Paul does is reassure and directs them to focus their minds on what will help them. Don't worry, beloved friends, bring your concerns to God. He prays over them. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I wonder if he's saying, don't let your minds dwell on the things that disturb you, but actively focus on the things that will bring you hope and life. Whatever is true, in other words, not hearsay or what is false. Whatever is honourable, i.e. don't listen to those who seek to ridicule or criticise. Whatever is just, build in a positive response to the world around you i.e. seek to make a difference, supporting others, do your bit, think about the, the environment. Whatever is pure, feed the mind with good things, find help, helpful things to focus on. Whatever is pleasing, invest in developing new skills, have fun, Whatever is commendable, maybe that's about personal integrity. If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Paul is saying, acknowledge the area you are struggling with and then do something about it. And also help and reach out to one another. Bear one another's burdens. This is all about sustaining hope and developing wholeness through faith in Christ, who pours out his love and brings his healing and peace. We are encouraged in these days to continue to hope, to keep on going and to take care of ourselves and each other. During this time of difficulty, maybe we can do as the World Mental Health Day suggests, and do one thing for, for better mental health. As Paul says, 
Keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. One image that always brings me joy is that of a bubbling stream, especially glistening in the sunlight. Today's prayers are based on one called The Stream, written by former Bishop of Oxford and Jarrow, John Pritchard. So let's pray together. Think for a moment of a stream bouncing down the mountainside, clear, fresh and playful, it sparkles in the sun, 
Nothing can hold back its enthusiasm. Let that be a picture of how we feel about the good and joyful things in our life. The people, the events, the daily miracles of nature. Let's remember when our spirits rose this week, when life felt pure and true, and take a moment to be thankful for them now. The stream bounces on, full of itself, full of potential, but inevitably it runs into obstacles, boulders and fallen branches and the accumulation of debris. We too run into obstacles that fall across our paths, debris from our mistakes, boulders that seem too hard to shift. We name those obstacles now. But we also watch the stream. It may not be able to force its way through the problem, but it's endlessly inventive in finding another way, around or beneath or over. The love of God is inexhaustible and irresistible. Let's see that love carrying us over or under or around whatever obstacles are set before us. The stream is fuller now, more sure of itself. It's joined by other streams that have made their own journeys and brought their own character as a gift to others. Who has God given each of us as a gift? Who brings grace into our life? We give thanks for these people and pray for them, that they may continue to radiate the presence of Christ. Now the stream has become a river, growing all the time. There may be people in the water, struggling with the current, clinging to the wreckage of their hopes. We know many people who today find, feel swept away by difficulties too great for them to manage. Let's name them in our hearts and pray for them with conviction. For the Lord will lift them up and enable them to find safe harbour in his love. So we pray for them now. Now the river is broad, mighty and unstoppable, surging to the sea. The ways of God are huge in scale and irresistible in purpose, and we are part of that plan, the river the people of God. So we savour the certain knowledge that the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Lord of boundless energy, you refuse to be beaten. Always you reinvent yourself to achieve the impossible. Give us such confidence in your life running through us and through the world that nothing will stop you achieving your joyous purposes of love, life, hope and justice. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who's helped make this service happen. And also a big thank you to you, our virtual family, for watching and being part of this service with us. But I wonder if, like me, you are sitting here wondering, what can I put into practice what I've heard today? So I have some questions to hopefully help us think about that. 
I wonder if you can think of one activity to do this week that could be a prayerful act too. I wonder if you can think of one activity to do this week that could be a prayerful act too. Now, sometimes I struggle when questions are a little bit like that. So I've put some ideas here that you might want to think about doing, such as going on a prayer walk. I find that one really useful. Donating food to the community cupboard or another similar organisation near to you. Writing a letter to God. That's sometimes a really good way to get those feelings out to God. Saying yes to an activity or saying no to an activity can also be a prayerful act. Phoning or writing to someone. Resting and being in God's presence. Cooking. Listening. Asking for help or support. These are just some ideas of what could be a prayerful activity you do this week. I wonder what God's peace might look like for those you care about. I wonder what God's peace might look like for those you care about. I wonder what God's peace looks like for you. I wonder what God's peace looks like for you. going to end with this scripture. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. See you next week. Promise keeper, light in the darkness.